Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about what are the various steps involved in the fabrication of a mass transistor. So previously, I have explained what is the mass transistor structure, how that structure will be, and what are the different layers that a mass transistor consisting of. So if you take a mass transistor, the structure of the mass transistor will be like this. It may be a P substrate or N substrate that, that depends upon the type of the transistor. For N mass transistor, it is a P type substrate. It is an N type diffusion. Here it is an N type diffusion. In between these two, <coughs> we have an oxyl layer above which we have a polysilicon layer. Here, metallization is taking care and here metallization taking place and here is a metallization. So it may be the drain, this is the gate terminal and it is the source terminal. In between these two N regions or N diffusions, we have a length of the channel. So this is the channel. Channel is created from here to here. Okay. So in this type of mass transistors, there are several layers included here. Diffusion is there, P-type substrate is there, oxidation layer is there, polysilicon is there and metal is there. So in order to create such structure, there are several steps involved in the creation of this mass transistor. So it is the mass transistor structure. Mass transistor structure. Okay. Now, the steps are <coughs> see here these steps are very very important in the fabrication of mass transistor whether it is a p mass transistor or n mass transistor or it may be a cmos device cmos consisting of p mass and as well as n mass that means on a single substrate there we will create two transistors then a, in the interconnections of these two transistor will create a cmos device nothing but cmos inverter <coughs> The main steps are, first one is oxidation, oxidation, <coughs> second photolithography, photolithography and third step is diffusion and fourth one chemical vapor deposition chemical vapor deposition <clears throat> you can also name it as in short cvd technique and ion implantation ion implantation next one is Metallization, metallization. So these are the main six steps involved in the fabrication of mass transistor. See, all these six steps are repeatedly occur. Suppose if you are taking an oxidation layer, oxidation, <coughs> this oxidation will occur repeatedly. Okay, oxidation will occur repeatedly, photolithography will occur repeatedly and Diffusion, we will diffuse only one time, okay, whether it is a P-type or N-type diffusion that will take place only, that takes place only one time and chemical vapor deposition also will take place only one time. Iron implantation also only will be happen at only once and metallization also happens once. So, other than these three, four, five, six steps, so first oxidation layer and photolithography will be happen at multiple times, will be happen multiple times <clears throat> okay you can understand when we go into the fabrication steps individually suppose if you are taking an mass fabrication there i will explain why and how these steps are repeatedly coming okay so before going into the fabrication let us see uh, what are all these steps are indicating okay in this video i will explain the step by step uh, uh, meaning and uh, uh, the process what we are taking place individually in these the first step is oxidation. First step, oxidation. What do you mean by oxidation? Oxidation is nothing but creating, creating 
an insulating layer creating an insulating layer of thickness thickness 1 micrometer thickness 1 micrometer on the silicon substrate on the silicon substrate okay suppose if you are taking a substrate like this we are taking a substrate like this it may be either p type or n type substrate it is a substrate <coughs> for this substrate on the above of the entire surface of this substrate we are creating some insulating layer okay that is for multiple purposes the purpose i will tell you when we are going into the construction of this mass transistor so we are creating an oxidation layer on the entire surface of this one so this is the oxidation layer when we are creating an oxyl layer nothing but we are adding some o2 on this silicon then it becomes silicon dioxide that means oxide layer at high temperature is reacted with the silicon substrate that creates silicon dioxide on the entire substrate that acts like insulator this acts as insulation it acts as insulation because the entire substrate is a semiconducting substrate above which there should not be having any contacts with the other devices okay that's why we are adding some oscillation uh, oxidation <coughs> layer that creates as the oxide as the oxide layer is acted with the silicon it creates some silicon dioxide layer on the entire substrate okay it may be one micrometer or 0 0.1 micrometer depending upon the uses okay there are two types of oxidations are there in our uses one is thin oxidation thin oxidation and another one is thick oxidation thin oxidation and thick oxidation thin oxidation is nothing but depositing only one micrometer 0.1 micrometer thickness oxidation layer on the entire substrate and thick oxidation is nothing but creating one micrometer on the surface of the substrate okay this is what oxidation means so what we are doing we are depositing an oxyl layer and the entire substrate at high temperature see all these process whatever the six steps i have mentioned all these steps are chemical process and all these will take place only at the high temperature like uh, 1000 degrees 500 degrees 600 degrees celsius like that and the second step is photolithography photo lithography okay the name clearly tells that photo lithography here we are working with light photo means light here the entire process is taking place with the light photo lithography again consisting of three steps three steps what are those three steps first one is depositing depositing photo resist layer photo resist layer on the substrate and the second one is applying applying uv rays ultraviolet rays on the photo resist layer and the third applying uv rays through a mask you can also call it as through a mask and the third step is etching third step is etching see in some different different test books and different uh, websites you can come across multiple uh, steps for the same photolithography okay here i have combined all these steps into a single process called photolithography 
okay depositing photoresist layer you can consider as a one step applying uv rays you can consider as another step and etching you can consider as a separate step but all these together coming under this photolithography that's why i combinedly call this uh, process as a lithography or photolithography both are accepted consisting of three steps one is first we need to deposit a photoresist layer of one micrometer next applying the uv rays uv rays and then etching the unwanted area so example what i am saying here is so we have we have a substrate like this okay suppose i have deposited a 1 micrometer silicon dioxide layer like this now I, now i want to remove the oxide layer from here to here i want to remove the insulation from here to here okay so in order to remove this particular area this process photolithography will be helping okay this is the main application of this photolithography photolithography is nothing but eliminating some unwanted insulating area on the substrate surface so how what are the steps we are doing first we need to deposit a photoresist layer so apply first step photoresist layer so first we need to consider the same substrate with SiO2 layer so we are depositing photoresist layer of 1 micrometer this is somewhat indication for the photoresist layer next what we are doing we are applying UV rays through a mask what is the purpose of mask here see whenever this is the oxy layer here this is the photoresist layer here I am taking a mask and applying UV rays these are the ultraviolet rays falling on the surface area of the substrate now see applying UV rays through a mask what do you mean by photoresist layer photoresist layer means whenever the light falling on that it becomes it uh, becomes hardened it becomes hardened okay whenever the light touches that particular photoresist layer the entire layer becomes a very hard and a very hard means we cannot remove that okay so what we are doing is wherever we need to remove that oxidation layer there i am keeping a mask there i am keeping a mask see what happens when i am keeping a mask over here the light touches only at this particular edge and here this particular area these arrows shown marks are exposed to the uv rays okay so the area which is exposed to this uv rays are becoming harder compared to the the area which is not exposed to the uv rays so after that we will apply the process called etching then we will get this shape etching is nothing but removing the softened area so here it is like this here it is like this we have oxal layer at the either ends and the center we don't have any layer this shape is known as window shape this shape is known as window shape so window shape is nothing but acquiring the required shape by using the process called lithography this is what the lithography means and the third step is what do you mean by third step diffusion what do you mean by diffusion creating p plus region or n plus regions on the substrate creating p plus and n plus regions on the substrate if it is an n mass transistor we need to create n plus regions if it is a p mass transistor we need to diffuse p plus regions okay depending upon the type of the substrate we will uh, type of the mass transistor we will diffuse the corresponding things okay here the diffusion is also happening by passing by passing a gas with impurities nothing but suppose if you are uh, adding trivalent impurities or pentavalent impurities based on that we are imposing or injecting a gas into this substrate impurities by passing a gas with impurities at a high temperature 
at high temperature into the substrate okay then the n plus or p plus diffusions are going to be created and the next one is what is the fourth step we have here chemical vapor deposition so chemical vapor deposition i can name it as a cvd technique this chemical vapor deposition technique is especially used to create the polysilicon layer which is at the gate only okay so to create polysilicon polysilicon is also somewhat semiconducting layer and in in the absence of polysilicon we can use a silicide layer silicide okay because the properties of polysilicon are somewhat uh, uh, nearer to the properties of silicide layer so to create polysilicon at the gate terminal this cvd technique is used okay so chemical vapor deposition technique it is a chemical technique or a chemical uh, process where the high amount of gas is going to be passing through the surface of the surface of the substrate here the difference between the diffusion and chemical vapor deposition technique is in diffusion we are injecting the impurities into the substrate but whereas in cvd we are just creating the gas or passing the gas on the surface only okay it is not supposed to go inside okay so chemical vapor deposition technique creates a polysilicon layer on the substrate only at the center nothing but at the gate terminal and the next one is ion implantation what do you mean by ion implantation ion implantation is the process of creating channel suppose where there are two types of transistors depletion mode transistor and enhancement mode transistor in depletion mode transistor channel is already created defaulty that means the transistor comes up with a channel there is no need to create the channel but whereas in the enhancement mode of transistors there is no channel by default we need to create the channel by the application of vgs okay so ion implantation is the process of process of creating channel in the transistor between source and drain this is the process of ion implantation and the last but not least that is metallization metallization see once the transistor is designed finally we need to take the terminals outside okay source is a terminal gate should be a terminal and drain should be a terminal so in order to connect these three terminals with the external devices definitely there should be some contact leads developed through them so metallization is the technique so metallization is nothing but process of creating contacts with the source drain and gate terminals by extending extending with copper wires by extending with copper wires okay so metallization is nothing but creating a contact creating a contact cut thereby inserting a copper wire that gives the connection with those three terminals to connect with the external devices these are the different steps that are used in the process of fabrication of the mass transistor okay so in the next video i will explain the how these processes will be helpful for us to create different transistors like nmos pmos or uh, cmos we will see there okay thank you